Good afternoon. Today we'll be discussing initiation strategies for renal replacement therapy in intensive care, the Akiki trial 2016. So this is the basis of the trial in critically ill patients with acute kidney injury does delayed compared with early initiation of renal replacement therapy, reduced mortality at 60 days. This is the basis of the entire trial. So just a few points about introduction. AKI is one of the most common causes of uh, most common condition in critical care patients. It's associated with high mortality and morbidity. Many studies have focused on different methods of RRT, including intermittent or continuous. The issue is there's always been a confusion whether to initiate it early or whether to have a delayed uh, initiation because when to initiate the therapy changes the scenario sometimes. So there are different uh, trials which initially suggested that if you start early, they, uh, the patient will be better managed because their fluid requirement might change, their, uh, their electrolytes are better managed. There were, and few observation studies have shown that you know there, uh, there is a mortality benefit in, in uh, starting an early, early renal replacement therapy. But a few others have shown that you know uh, starting delayed renal replacement therapy would help in the patients avoiding renal replacement therapy as a whole and also the chances of urinary tract infections are comparatively less if you start in a patient with only delayed renal replacement therapy. So our idea is basically we have divided uh, in this study, they have divided the patients into two groups, the early versus delayed. The early, uh, early is when as soon as the patient meets the KTGO3 classification, that is the serum creatinine is above 4 or 354 milligram or 354 or the urine output is less than 0.3 milligram per kg per hour for 24 hours, or the patient has an area of 12 hours. So as soon as the patient meets the KTGO criteria 3, you start the patient on renal replacement therapy. That is the early group. In the delayed group, what you do is you wait until the patient has one of the following symptoms, like if they're having metabolic acidosis, pH less than 7.15, or they are having hyperkalemic, or there is fluid overload, or the urea levels are above more than 40. So then only you start than in the replacement therapy. This is the basis of this. So, and they would, and they would check and they would, and the endpoint would be at 60 days, what is the mortality? Is the mortality less in, if the patient were in an early group, is the mortality less if the patients were in the delayed group? That's the basic idea of the trial. So the design is basically an unblinded prospe uh, prospective multi-center open label trial where it was conducted in France from September, 2013 to January, 2016. The inclusion criteria was patient had to be an adult admitted in ITU with acute kidney injury that was compatible with the diagnosis of acute tubular necrosis, receiving invasive mechanical ventilation, was on catecholamine infusion, norepinephrine, norepinephrine, and to undergo randomization, patients were required to be at least KDGO3. Now, the problem with this was, uh, I'll explain later, the, a lot of the patients who were not on KDGO3, this trial could not be applied. Exclusion criteria was if they're having pre-existing chronic renal failure, cardiac arrest without awakening, severe laboratory abnormalities like urea more than 40 millimoles, potassium more than six, despite on medical treatment, PS less than 7.15 in the context of either pure metabolic acidosis or mixed acidosis. Acute pulmonary demand due to fluid overload causing severe hypoxemia, that is requirement of more than five liters of oxygen to maintain a saturation of more than 95%. Now, the randomization was, uh, it was a computer-generated randomization. Concealment of the study group was achieved by use of a centralized, secure, interactive web-based system. Now, what was done basically? In the early replacement group, we got 312 patients. They were aimed to start renal replacement therapy within six hours of documentation of KDGO stage three. They could, the study achieved that they could start renal replacement therapy in 4.3 hours in the early group, as soon as the KDGO three criteria was met. Six patients did not receive RRT in the early replacement group. In the delayed replacement group, the renal replacement therapy was initiated only if they met one of the following things. Either they should have like urea more than 40, potassium more than six, pH less than 7.15, acute pulmonary edema, that is fluid overload, oliguria lasting for more than 72 hours. And uh, then they were started renal replacement therapy in this group. And the median time for starting was 51% of the patients at 57 hours after from the time of admission, they started in a replacement therapy in these patients. The thing to look at here is only 51 patients received RRT. Almost 49% of the patients 
did not receive renal replacement therapy in a delayed group. That is one of the important things which was found here. So the early group, as soon as you uh, satisfy the criteria of KDGO3, you start renal replacement therapy. And they could do that within 4.7 hours. In the delayed group, unless you have one of the metabolic abnormalities, urea, creat, or pH less than 7.5, or fluid overload, then only they would have started. The idea was, as soon as the patient meets one of the criteria, that is urea or pH or potassium, uh, you start them, uh, you start renal replacement therapy. Now, when do you discontinue renal replacement therapy? If there is a spontaneous urine output of more than 500 ml in 24 hours, highly recommended if the urine output was more than 1000 ml 24 hours, or if the patient has spontaneous diuresis and there was a decrease in urea and creatinine. Renal replacement therapy resumed if the diuresis was insufficient, that is, there is a decrease again in the urine output that is less than 1000 ml in 24 hours, then you would restart the patient on renal replacement therapy. That was the idea. What was the outcome? The outcome was that there was no significant difference in mortality in the both patients. Either you start early or you start delayed, there was not showing any mortality difference at 60 days. At 28 days also, there was no significant difference in the mortality. Length of the stay also, if you could check, there was 13 days in survivors, in non-survivors, it's just six days. The secondary outcomes which was also measured were the length of the hospital stay. There was no difference in the length of hospital stay between the two groups. Survivor stayed for 29 versus 32 days and non-survivor six days versus six days. Now the proportion of the patients with catheter-related infection. This was the only thing which was found different. It was higher in the early intervention group. Catheter-related infections were higher in those groups. Now, limitations of this trial was, in order to get a decent power of 90%, the sample size would require was 70,000 patients. But obviously this trial had only around 640 patients. So that was one big limitation. Second was study group only included advanced kidney diseases. So results may not be generalized to patients with varied degree of kidney injury. Only KDGO three patients were used in this trial. So KDGO one, two or other trial, other category of renal, uh, renal injuries, they couldn't, you couldn't apply this data to them. Moreover, the type of RRT used in this was intermittent. Some patients used intermittent, some patients used, uh, some centers used continuous. So because there was a difference in that, that data couldn't commonly be applied because in uh, ITU, most of our patients are on continuous renal replacement therapy. So patients data from intermittent hemodialysis couldn't be applied to them. So in conclusion, in critically ill patients with acute, severe acute kidney injury, early initiation versus delayed has no difference in mortality benefit. Now, there were, when this trial was actually started in 2016, there were two trials from which uh, data, from which the, you know, uh, pro forma or a basis was taken. One of them was the ideal ICU trial, which was, uh, which was started before, uh, before this trial, but it concluded in 2018. This trial was among septic patients. What it, what it did was among patients with septic shock who had severe acute kidney injury, there was no significant mortality at 90 days between patients who were in early group or delayed group. This particularly concentrated in patients with septic shock, RRT. It showed nothing. And this trial was stopped with the second interim analysis because it was showing no difference between the mortality. This was one of the trials which was the basis of starting a Kiki trial. Now, Akiki went one step ahead. Now, what they did is basically what they found is there is no difference in mortality, yes, but the delayed group had 50% or 49% of the patients in delayed group didn't receive renal replacement therapy at all. That's actually a pretty good thing. So they went ahead and tried a Kiki 2, which was published last year. In this, what they did is they compared delayed versus very delayed. So they thought, what if we try to postpone it further? So in this, what they did is, in acute patients, if they had, um, you know, blood urea nitrogen more than 112, milli 112 milligram per day. In that, it was a Kiki one, it was 40 only. The cutoff was 40. In this, they increased the cutoff to 112. And until the patient didn't develop uh, severe noticeable hyperkalemia, severe metabolic acidosis or pulmonary edema, and the blood nitrogen didn't reach above 112 to 140 milligram, they wouldn't start renal replacement therapy. That was the thing. But again, 
what what it found what in what it found was in severe acute kidney injury patients with oliguria for more than 72 hours or blood urea nitrogen higher than 112 and no severe complication that would mandate renal replacement therapy longer postponement of renal replacement therapy did not confer additional benefit and was actually associated with potential harm so the conclusion <laughs> yeah so the conclusion is don't to delay too much but the delayed approach could be looked in one way so under the limitations also they discuss this you know the problems with the trial is it couldn't be generalized to all your patients as i mentioned that there were issues with some of the patients being started on intermittent hemodialysis in the trial some of the patients all the patients were on kidigo 3 so you can't generalizely apply that you know to start the, that patient should be started on this but it it gives you an idea that uh, starting early versus starting delayed there is no difference because initially people were in the idea you know let's start early as soon as possible as soon as the patient knows that might give a benefit but they were all observational trials and they didn't have enough patient population they were a limited number of patients so those trials this trial basically refutes that it gives you a definitive answer yes there is no benefit of starting early versus delayed yeah. Any questions? Any questions? So the very delayed is this criteria. Renal uh, the therapy was postponed until mandatory indications like noticeable hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, pulmonary edema, or blood urea nitrogen reached 140. In the AKK1 trial, they used 40 as a cutoff. In this, they went up to 140. But obviously, if the patient has any life-threatening indications like hyperkalemia not being managed by medical management, then obviously you would initiate. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.